It has been over two years since BP's deep water drilling disaster began. And as Hurricane Isaac has just shown clearly, oil can still be found in Louisiana's marshes and along Mississippi's barrier islands. BP's impacts on the coastal ecosystem are beginning to come into focus. Researchers are discovering sick dolphins, eyeless shrimp, decreased microorganism diversity, and a critical bait fish species, the Gulf killifish, plagued by a wide variety of sublethal impacts, similar to those that preceded the commercial collapse of the herring fishery in Prince William Sound, four seasons after the Exxon Valdez spill. We've been studying the effects of the Deepwater Horizon oil spill pretty much since day one before the oil actually hit the coastal marsh. And we were looking in particular on the effects of the oil on the Gulf killifish, known locally as the Cocoho minnow. When we uh, look at these fish in the most heavily oiled areas, we find that there are certain genes that um, are essentially being turned up in their, uh, in their abundance in fish that were exposed uh, to the oil. I think one of the concerns is that there's been a, this huge direction at looking at acute lethality. So does it kill the animal? And what we know from the Exxon Valdez is that, that acute lethality isn't really the best endpoint to be looking at in that in the years that follow the Exxon Valdez, that some of the reproduction and the lack of reproduction of fish was one of the major uh, links associated with the associated declines in, in the fish populations there. But what about offshore? in the marine environment. While coastal impacts have been significant, much of BP's oil never made it to shore. Instead, it was kept offshore by currents or sunk by a historic application of toxic dispersant. From bluefin tuna to red snapper, fish that frequent the blue water habitats of the Gulf were in the bullseye for BP's crude and Corexit. Scientists can't yet say with certainty what has happened, but warning signs are being identified. We're seeing all sorts of impacts, uh, whether it's the initial in individual impacts of oil birds and sea turtles and marine mammals that were well publicized early, to the more intermediate scale things where you started seeing uh, petroleum in inside fish eggs, and inside the organisms themselves. Certainly there is uh, a good deal of oil that's still at the lower levels of the Gulf of Mexico that have been smothering things like deep water corals. And then there are the questionable long-term impacts that we're still trying to tease out. The whole issue with using the dispersant on that oil without really knowing what that dispersant was is something that has a lot of people in the scientific community uh, raising eyebrows, shall we say. What we do know is that the Gulf of Mexico is an important spawning habitat for things like bluefin tuna. Any additional stressor on a species that's already depleted is never a good thing. Deep water reefs have been damaged and have likely lost biodiversity, while red snapper and other deep water species have shown lesions and sores. It's clear that marine impacts are significant and restoration efforts are needed one approach would be to decrease other threats to breeding fisheries, such as the unintended catch of non-target species, also known as bycatch. For at least the pelagic longline gear, the bycatch problems are pretty well known. They have been for many years, whether it's for billfishes, the sea turtles, marine mammals like pilot whales, and Rizzo's dolphins. There are large numbers of bluefin, honestly, that are caught by the pelagic longline fishery in the Gulf. So they're already, uh, stressed individually and to have to deal with things like dispersants or residual oil or missing parts of their food uh, already adds those additional problems to it. And in contrast, the buoy gear and the green stick gears both have been shown in prior studies to have very low rates of bycatch. And the bycatch that they do catch, because the gears retrieve very quickly, have very low levels of depth. And so you're able to release those animals uh, quickly, easily, and with minimal injury. So we're demonstrating already that we're starting to catch fish. The uh, effectiveness of the gear is increasing. And although we still got a couple tweaks to figure out, I think that these two gears do show viability for the Gulf of Mexico. So if we can encourage some of those vessels in the current longline fishery to switch over, I think it would be a positive thing for bluefin tuna.
As restoration efforts proceed in the Gulf, the Gulf Restoration Network continues to need your support. Please visit healthygulf.org to learn more, take action, and donate to these efforts.